that's definitely new. Hey, been a while. You've caught me at kind of a weird time, but I'm good, I promise. I'm in the middle of selling a lot of artwork, which is exciting and scary and admittedly kind of a big relief. I had to make a really difficult decision though, and I'm just hoping it was the right one. What day is it today? Thursday? What day? Uh... 21st. It's your birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have um, 10 days to, to pack up the whole studio and I'm going to leave. Um... So if anyone wants to buy some art, um, I have a lot. Is it make an offer? Yeah, make an offer. If you're in Australia and you want to buy some, some of my garbage, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll deliver it in person if you pay me enough money. Uh, as long as you don't try to kidnap me or something. Okay. Two years I've been here. It's been good. It's been very good. I always said this was more like, you know, this was a second home, but, you know, really it's been a, like a first home, you know, sometimes quite literally, but on to, on to new exciting adventures and with money saved on very expensive studio rent, I'll be able to go do other things like go to different countries and see my hobby friends and invest in new projects and make New miniatures and stuff. I was pretty heartbroken to leave my studio, to be honest. But I've got a window now. And the neighborhood's pretty uh, cool. A little bit weird. I have this neighbor that just doesn't really want to go away. What do I even say to that? It doesn't matter. There's a lot to do. Like... A whole Warhammer army begging to be finished right now. You're witnessing, believe it or not, quite a special moment right now. This is the point where all the madness starts making sense. For all the weird parts from all the different companies, all the points in time that they were made, all the different art directions and style all come together to make something cohesive. A little bit of paint makes all the difference. The reason why my Warhammer army is so weird is because it's inspired by Realm of Chaos, which is a very particular point in time, a very special point in time, in the entirety of the game's history, where the art really had no cohesion and the models were bizarre. Chaos was actually chaos. So the models I use are smashed together from all different eras and sculptors and games and companies to make this. Nurgle is typically painted green, which is exactly why I went with purple. My friend Al has been helping me paint these models. He painted all the base coats for me while I was moving. This army has turned incredibly collaborative, which is honestly everything I could have ever wanted. This massive model was sculpted all at the same time by some of my closest mates. This model I made on my own on a big adventure, but when I got to my final destination, my friend Pablo, who I had just met, carved its likeness into a lino block and made beautiful prints of it. This was one of the highest honors <laughs> anyone could ever have. I'm very, very proud. And if you want one, I'm sure Pablo will sell you one. 
this Warhammer army has taken so many twists and turns and I think like no other it's this model my great unclean one that shows that the most every single step of this journey this model has been transformed into something new and I guess that's because my styles and tastes and expectations are always changing and I wanted the biggest model to always represent that. And I think finally, I can put this beast to rest. I painted these models with acrylics and then on top of that, oil paints. I really love oil paints. I don't love how long they take to dry. It's gonna be like two or three days until I can work on these again. In the meantime, Perhaps this is a good opportunity to get my life together. Whenever I feel overwhelmed, my girlfriend's advice, my beautiful partner, Rachel, she says, write a list. And that's exactly what I did. I wrote down everything that I thought finishing would make me feel better. Everything that I think I need to add into my life to feel better. Everything that I've been avoiding and I shouldn't have been like my taxes. And on that note, let's do something dumb. Now this entry on my to-do list might be a surprising one, but it's quite important to me and close to my childhood heart. I got a kit bash, a Pokemon. My friend Bill is running a tournament for his tabletop game called Mech 28, which has absolutely nothing to do with Pokemon but somehow, at some point, someone found a Pokemon model kit and then things very quickly escalated. And now everyone involved is bringing a Pokemon themed mech. A bunch of my friends are doing it, so I thought I'd get in early and claim Gengar as my Pokemon of choice. I think the tone is that it's not just about having a Pokemon, but it's also about making it your own. Everyone else's that I've seen so far are particularly strange, which is what has led me to having my tongue submerged in Elginet, which I think is safe, in an attempt to cast my own tongue to replace Gengar's. And I did this five times before deciding my tongue was just a little bit too big. So I borrowed my girlfriend's tongue. She was an incredible sport about it. And now I just have a bunch of tongues drying on my windowsill. Now Mech 28 is a game where big things fight. It's not just mechs. So I wanted to make Gengar into a giant ghost. And that would involve making a mold. Mold making is an art that I've been exploring a lot over the last couple of years, but something like this really puts my abilities to the test because I want Gengar to be translucent and my mold needs to be perfect because any sort of mistake you can't just sand away or cover up. What you get is what you get. The thing is, my supplies are kind of old and I had to fill the mold with mostly silicon chunks from old molds, which is pretty standard practice, but this many is kind of risky because silicon cures better the more volume there is. So if chunks collide with the model or the box or other chunks in a way that spreads the silicon too thin, it can take a very long time for it to cure. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. And uh, I just prayed to the craft gods that my mold would come out fine. And it came out pretty rough, <laughs> honestly. Uh, a few parts weren't properly cured and that was in kind of unfortunate places. And like, I was a bit disappointed, but not shocked. But man, was I really hoping for a blessing. And hesitantly, after looking at my bank account, I ordered more materials to try again. I was so close. How could I not? And I clicked that order button, and I thought about how long it's going to take to get here. And I thought, nah, there's no way. I'm so close, too close to wait. Let's just turn this boat around. And so I kept going. 
Let's use paint, let's use glazes. Let's use the clear parts of the model that worked. What if I spray this stuff on it? I could try anything now. I was just gonna throw this away. And man, I'm telling you, I'm looking at it now. I'm so glad I continued. You know, sometimes the way things turn out isn't always exactly how it was gonna be in your head. And I think that's okay. And I reckon, I reckon I would have got there eventually. But, you know, I can save that for another project. Maybe it's good just to see things through, roll with the punches. Because I definitely learned a lot. Sometimes I think failure can be a blessing. And you know that idea is like... <laughs> kind of applicable to a lot of things in my life at the moment. You know, moving out of my studio kind of felt like a bit of a failure. But you know, I've moved into this new little workshop now, which I love with all my heart. And it, um, you know, the limitations of the space and stuff, they also kind of feel inspiring. Anyway, Gengar's gonna come kick your ass at the poker tournament, so watch out. Hey. Hi, I have a package for Trent. That's me. Can you sign here? Thank you. You know, I've decided I'm not going to make another Gengar mold, but what I will do. See, my plan is to get to Adepticon, which honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to do that yet. But when I get there, I'm gonna need miniatures, because that's the best way to meet people. Cool miniatures. In this mold box is a pretty peculiar miniature. I wanted to make it in metal, but it was gonna cost too much money, so it sort of sat in the pile of shame until today. I don't know who started the term pile of shame, but they suck. Having unfinished projects comes with a guilty feeling. That's the pile of shame for those who don't know. It's kind of dumb, kind of very dumb. I'm a firm believer that a hobby is a hobby first of all, and it should be fun. But also projects take unexpected twists and turns, and you don't always know if a project is right for you, right for your ability, right for your time, your budget, your style, your drive, your motivation, your reason to create, your whatever. You don't know these things until you start a project most of the time. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to put things on hold. It's even okay to let them go. This miniature in particular has lived in several piles of shame in the last 12 months. But eventually it got here. Finished and real and not because I felt guilty, but because the time was right. So why did I spend 12 months carrying any guilt at all? I don't know. Piles of shame are real dumb. Damn. It looks good. So this is my finished guardian. I don't know what are you guardians. But he's covered in doodles and this face is inspired by like old buildings, like those ornaments on old buildings. He sat in a pile of shame because he actually started from this miniature. This is an unreleased miscast miniature from Tina Fieldling and uh, I remixed it digitally and turned it into this. I still love this though, I'm just not quite sure what to do with it, but for now. This guy is going to be a fresh new release for Adepticon. Super weird. But that's not all. These are miniatures that I made with my friends while I was in the UK. These are kitbashed and sculpted monstrosities using parts from all my friends and they're horrific and I love them. This is a cute little arcane ugly monster. That's my tabletop RPG. I made this years ago and I finally made little copies of it. And while I was feeling very creatively inspired over the last couple of days getting all these things done, I cooked up these. I have no idea what they are, but I think they're sick. I'm just making a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> I've really felt like something important in my life has been missing, and that's socializing. 
but I, I kind of isolated myself when I felt really, really stressed. And uh, it was really not very good for me. So as a compromise to myself, I started hanging out on like online crafting groups, crafting with other people and just hanging out. Now it's something I, I can't do without. And I really want to thank all those people that hung out with me when it was really, really tough. And also, I've been so bloody productive. <laughs> uh, I got my plants nowhere to be found. Collector's editions done. I only made six of them. I don't even have a copy for myself because I cost a lot of money and time and resources. But they're like proper artifacts. Each one of them has so much individual love put into them. And I want to share them with you. Hopefully, it might inspire you. But I would love to do something like this again in the future. I've also been fixing a bunch of stuff that's been neglected over the last couple of years. And I've been organizing my bits, boxes, and materials. All these things that you have to suddenly consider when your workspace shrinks down. But I feel really empowered in my space now. Like it feels like mine. Like I'm growing into it. Anyway, I got another one of these calls in like an hour. So... The segment is about making hard decisions. It's also the segment that I finally make one. So I just got word that I have an opportunity to share a table at Adepticon with another artist in order to sell miniatures. This is a really incredible opportunity. Getting a table at Adepticon is very, very rare. Uh, Adepticon is also on the other side of the world in a month. And I still don't know how I'm going to get there. But that's a later problem. Sometimes you've just got to act like you've got your shit together and then work it out. So I'm making the executive decision to order even more materials as though I know it's going to pay off. Okay, so picture this. One morning you're scrolling through social media and every single miniature... Every single miniature artist you follow, their miniatures, their hands have been replaced by yellow cubes. And this phenomenon happened to me uh, and many other people because it turns out this was a coordinated event called Yellow Cube, ran by my friend Ben, Apocrypha now. And this was some of the coolest stuff to experience and it's happening again this year. And I'm ready. This is my cube. Cube repeat. The idea behind cubipede is that there's a void on the back of cubipede which is the same shape as the front of cubipede which means that multiple cubipedes can join together to make a, a cubipede in order to do this i need to mold and cast this miniature and i was thinking you know this is a trap i've fallen into before project creep because this wasn't initially going to be a cubipede i was inspired by the beautiful nature outside initially when I was making this, but I wanted to push it further. And uh, now I have a big job ahead of me. So I probably need to do something sensible right now. And I think that's cleaning out my void of miniatures. All my unreleased stuff, I should clean it out now. <sighs> I'm gonna go do that. Uh, hey, it's it's me. I'm in the I'm in the void. This is this is what I look like in the void. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where the void is because uh, you might st steal all my stuff. But I'm I'm here. Uh, look at all my miniatures. These are all unreleased miniatures that I've been sitting on that I have no idea what to do with uh, because I set my expectations too high and I wanted them all to be made out of metal. Turns out that's really bloody hard and really expensive. Uh, so now I'm just sitting on these miniatures. And uh, I should probably do something about that. If only I had some friends that could help. Oh yeah. <laughs> Literally so many. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up and I'll meet you. I'll meet you back in like 10. Good morning, Curtis. It is in fact a beautiful morning because I've been up all night and I have a plan. <laughs> I 
but I, I might need your help. Yeah, I mean, I'm 100% up for doing this. It doesn't seem like it'll be much of a bother. It'd be like a month, I guess, from getting getting the STLs that are ready to print to having like the first casts out. It's like a good time scale. So Curtis reckons one month to get my miniatures into production, which is very, very good. Uh, but I also have an idea how to fix this problem right away. I have 17. 17 unreleased miniatures. I think it'd be good to at least make some of those digital, which is where this episode's sponsor comes in. My Mini Factory. Plane tickets are very, very expensive. So I'm working with My Mini Factory to bring you 10 exclusive miniatures for My Mini Factory. Nine of those miniatures displayed right here are available to buy right now. But this miniature, is available for free on my mini factory right now. And while you're there, consider supporting my friend's work too. Tideworld Studios makes some of the best Mordheim terrain in the game. And if you want miniatures to match, Knucklebones Miniatures is another friend of mine and their catalog is incredible. Let's work on the cube while I think about what to do with these other miniatures. Seven miniatures remain. These are all very sentimental to me. They feel like a real turning point in my style. They really reflect who I am right now a whole lot, which is why it's kind of hard for me to compromise. Why it's hard for me to let go of the idea that they were going to be metal miniatures and make them in resin, which is also very beautiful, but just not the plan. I guess I have this fear that I'm holding onto an idea because I'm worried I won't ever have something this good again. I won't have an idea this good, I won't have a concept this good, I won't have a sculptor this good. I won't have a platform or an audience ever again. So if I don't do my very best right now, I may never get that shot again. But if history's taught me anything, the thing I make tomorrow will be better than what I made yesterday. And the day after that will be better than the day before and the day before and... So what am I holding on to? I just gotta make cool shit now, knowing I'll make cool shit tomorrow too. And so I've decided that the seven miniatures will be sent to Curtis at Ramshackle Games to be cast in beautiful resin and Curtis will do a fantastic job of it. And as much as I would love them to be metal, what I'd love more is for them to actually be real. So, yeah. All right, let me show you some cubes. Actually, first, before I show you the cube, I want to show you the mold I made for it because I am quite impressed with my mold making skills, if I may say so myself. This is 10A silicon. This is like the softest silicon I can buy. And I needed it to be really soft to get these cubes out. But look, look at this intricate cut that I've done. That's some proper engineering. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to show someone. I'm mad proud. Anyway. Have a look at the cubes. Well, I told you it'd be a couple of days until I'd be able to finish painting this army, but uh, honestly, it's been a couple of weeks, <laughs> but I definitely do feel like I have my life together, finally. And I can start painting right away. Hello? It's great when good things happen to the best people. Did you get this card?